and I'll put that in the box so people know. So what we're going to do today is I'm going to share with you my days on the lawn presentation that we usually get to do live right at the nursing school. And because I have to share my screen to do that, it's harder for me to keep up with the chat during the session. So if you don't mind, I'm going to go through the presentation, which shouldn't take more than 15 or 20 minutes. But as we go through, if you think of questions, if you please put them in the chat as soon as I get to the end and can turn off my screen share. I'll answer all of your questions that show up on the chat. So I'm going to stop my video and share my screen and we'll get busy. Here we go. Welcome. Welcome to our days on the lawn program. I'm really excited that I can do this, even if I can't be in the same room with you today, because we are really looking forward to the class of 2024 joining us in just a few short months. So let's get started. Oh, please work, please work. <laughs> Yay! It is an easy three step process one, two, three steps to becoming a Wahoo, to becoming a part of the University of Virginia School of Nursing community. And the first step, you've already taken care of. You did it, you're in, y'all, yay! I don't know if we've already said this to some of you, but I believe we had close to 1,300 applications this year for the 75 spots that we have in the School of Nursing. So if you don't always already know it, yes, you are smart and we want you to be here with us next fall. And really, I mean, can you think of a nicer place to hang out for a few years? That's the Rotunda on the lawn, which is just a few steps away from the School of Nursing. There I am, quite a few years ago, standing outside the Claude Moore Nursing Building saying, welcome, welcome to the School of Nursing. This could be your home for the next four years. But my job today is to try to convince all of y'all that by next, what is it, Friday, decision day, you will say yes to the UVA School of Nursing. Now, I know this is a big decision to go through, and we want to make sure you have all the information you can possibly have to make a good informed decision. But I also understand that it's one of the biggest decisions you may have made ever in your life, and it kind of feels like this. That's me up in the pink jacket up there. That's me on the UVA ropes course up on Observatory Hill. And when I think about this big decision that you're needing to make, it kind of feels like you're doing the high ropes course up there and you are now supposed to jump from that ledge, <laughs> which you see, there I am. Now, I hope you'll also note that there are all kinds of people underneath waiting for me, my safety net. There are all kinds of ropes attached to me because it is a big step, but just like when I took the leap off that ledge and you take the leap and make your decision, there'll be all that support there to help you and get you through those next four years. So all you have to do to get to step two is take the leap and decide that you're gonna be here in the fall. So what I wanna do is walk you through the, the curriculum through the next four years and then share with you a little bit about the life of this place and the ways our, our students are involved in the nursing school and at the university. And then again, at the end, take lots of questions from you. So be putting those in the chat until I can get back to you. So step two, you're in. You are a first year student at the University of Virginia School of Nursing. Because we are a direct admit school, you do not have to sit around and take prereqs and wait to hear if you're in the nursing school. You're in the nursing school. And because you're in the nursing school, we get you busy right away. So in the first semester, you'll start your two semester anatomy and physiology sequence, which includes a lab, both of those semesters. Half of you will take chemistry in the fall, half of you will take microbiology. In the spring, you'll switch and take the other one. Your third nursing class in the fall is um, lifespan development. And in the spring, your third nursing class is called Cells to Society. So as you can see, you really are fully engaged in the academic program at the School of Nursing your first year. And here are some first years in the anatomy and physiology lab beginning to learn some of those skills. Even your anatomy and physiology lab is in the nursing building. And all of your nursing classes will be in one of our two nursing buildings. You saw me a minute ago standing outside Claude Moore, right across the street from Claude Moore is McLeod Hall. 
that's where our labs are. And, and you have your nursing labs in those rooms, but you also have your anatomy and physiology lab in those rooms. Okay, first year, piece of cake. Move right on to second year, right? Second year is where it really starts to get real. You get your scrubs and you get your stethoscope and we have our white coat ceremony at family weekend in the fall. And it's a really exciting time. And I think it's when students really, really begin to feel like a nurse, even though they may not know a whole lot yet. The other thing we do is we build the size of your class in the fall and add in some transfer students. So like I said, we're hoping for a class of about 75 first years to cross the doorstep in August. And then in the second year of your program, we'll add transfers into the class and build that size up to somewhere between 95 to 100. But y'all, that is as big as it gets in the school of nursing. The biggest class you'll have with us would have that in that after that second year, 95 to 100 folks. And as you'll hear as we go through the curriculum, there are quite a few classes where we're dividing that down into smaller parts. All of your classes are taught by professors. If we use graduate assistants, it's typically in a lab or some kind of small breakout or in a supporting role, but all of your courses are taught by nursing faculty. Let's see if I made it through all my points on that one. So that second year, and these are very excited second years who have just gotten their scrubs and their stethoscopes and those big bags of their nurse packs that they use and their two lab courses that they take in the fall of second year. In the spring of second year, we get you into your first clinical course. Again, it's a direct admit school, you're in. And what that means is that by the spring of your second year, you've learned all those skills you need in your nursing labs in the fall in order to go in and begin learning the patient side of patient care, where instead of maybe a nursing friend being your lab partner, your lab partner kind of becomes that patient that you're taking care of. Now, we don't throw you into an emergency room or an ICU in that first clinical it is a med surge clinical, so that means an acute care setting, and all of those clinicals are in the UVA hospital, which if you were to look right over the heads of these students in this picture and behind that big tree, you could see the hospital. That's close the nursing school is to the UVA Medical Center. And we also kind of ease you into the clinical setting by having that second year spring clinical, that first one, be what we call a half day clinical. So you'll probably only be on the unit maybe four hours or so. But every clinical that you have from second year to graduation is going out in a small group typically of about eight, uh, eight nursing students total, so you and seven other students with a clinical instructor. And you meet on the floor, typically quite early in the morning. You often get your patient assignment the day before so that you can do what we call prep which is short for preparation. You're preparing to go in and take care of that patient the next day. So your clinical instructor gives you some basic information. You log onto the electronic charting system and you do prep the night before clinical to learn more about the patient so that when you arrive at the hospital early the next morning, you're prepped, you're ready to go. You'll probably have a small clinical conference to begin the day, but then you go out with your patient assignment and begin to do, to put into practice those skills that you're learning. So that's second year, diving right in. Third year, in the third year, <clears throat> we pick up the pace a little bit. Clinicals, clinicals, clinicals. So like I said, we ease you in second year with just this little half day, one clinical in the spring. But beginning with the fall of third year and pretty much until you graduate, you can expect to have two full days of lecture, typically Mondays and Wednesdays when you're in the nursing school buildings, morning through lunch or later. And then two full days of the week you spend on the hospital floor in a clinical rotation. So Bachelor of Science in Nursing courses are preparing you to be a generalist nurse. And because of that, each semester you'll rotate through different specialty areas to learn more about them. In the fall of the third year, everyone takes a second med surge clinical, so an acute care type clinical. And then half the class is going to take our women's health clinical or what we call OBGYN. Half the class will be in the pediatric clinical. Then in the spring of third year, those switch. So whichever one you didn't do in the fall, you take in the spring. And then we also have two halves in the spring of third year where half the class takes a 
psychiatric mental health clinical, and the other half takes the community health clinical. And again, they're going to flip again when they get to the fall of the fourth year. So let's see. Like I said, when you move into clinical, you start working with patients. Now, you're going to have that clinical instructor right there on the floor with you. You're also going to have a little bit of supervision from the person we call the co-assigned nurse. And the co-assigned nurse is the nurse who works in that hospital on that floor and actually is the most responsible for the patient. So everything a nursing student does pretty much is signed off by a clinical instructor as well as the co-assigned nurse. And because you're, because you're going to a university that has a teaching hospital as a part of its mission, everybody there, not just the nurses, are engaged and involved in helping you learn everything you need to know to be uh, a well-trained and prepared registered nurse when you graduate. Okay, again, just making sure I'm not forgetting anything. Oh, and look at, there's a nice size clinical group. Now for all of these med surge or acute care clinicals, you're gonna have all of those at the UVA hospital. For the pediatric rotation that you do in the third year, most of your time will be on a peds unit in the UVA hospital, but because not all pediatric care takes place in that kind of clinical setting, you also spend a few days that semester in various other sites, typically away from an acute care setting. You might spend a day with a school nurse in one of the local schools, or you might spend some time in an outpatient clinic. But we wanna make sure that you're getting some experiences that aren't just about the, the most critically, critically sick children. And the same is true for your OBGYN class. Most of your time will be spent in the labor and delivery unit at UVA Hospital or perhaps at Martha Jefferson Hospital, which is across town. And in Charlottesville, when we say across town, we mean 15 minutes away. <laughs> um, but again, a couple of days, you'll probably be working with mothers who are expecting babies in a clinic or doing some kind of postnatal sort of experience. But again, everything pretty local. For your community health rotation, that's the one that doesn't take place in any hospital setting. So that's the one where you're more likely to be going someplace inside of Charlottesville or a few of our rural locations nearby. So most of your clinicals are going to take place, I would say most students, 80 to 90 percent of the time they spend in clinical is spent at the UVA Medical Center. Let's see. Um, oh, I know another thing that sometimes people want to know about is if they have to have a car or how far away they might have to go for the community health clinical that I mentioned. As I said, we do have some of those sites out in the rural area around Charlottesville, but keep in mind every clinical you do is always with other students. So there's a lot of carpooling that happens. Even for the OBGYN clinical that takes place at Martha Jefferson, we're going to be sending eight students over there. And you could find some other way to get there on your own if you had to via a bus ride, perhaps, or an Uber. But students almost always carpool to those places. And sometimes they even report back to me that that's a very fun way to get to know other students in their class. Because keep in mind, you're taking every class together from next fall when you begin an anatomy or micro or chem all the way through graduation. But every time you're in a clinical, you're gonna be mixed in with different students in your class. So that really does sort of create this wonderful sense of community academically that then really extends beyond the classroom. Because you spend so much time in our buildings, a lot of time on Mondays and Wednesdays, there's a lot of hangout time between classes. We're pretty good at get, uh, making sure there are always good snacks in the lobby. There's a lot of free food that passes around the nursing school. So you do really get to know your peers very well, your faculty really well, and then I hope people like me as well also. The farthest locations we have for clinicals are Stanton. We send usually two or three clinical groups to the Western State Psychiatric Hospital in Stanton, Virginia, which is about a half an hour drive from the university. And I think the farthest out we go for that community health, and most of them are actually in Charlottesville, but the farthest one out is in Louisa County. And I think that drive is more like 40 minutes, perhaps, from Charlottesville to get out there. Now, let's see, you are going to be a fourth year before you know it. In the fall of fourth year, 
as I said before, you, half of you will have your community class, half will have psych, and then you have your third med surge or acute care rotation. Another class you take in the fall of fourth year is a course that helps you prepare for the life of a nurse, and we have some of our career course, career development um, embedded in that class. So the fall is all nursing, and then in the spring of your fourth year, we front load all the lectures for your classes, and you're here Monday through Thursday, beginning in January, and usually up to spring break, sometimes a little beyond spring break. But you have all the lecture part of the class classes, and some two of your classes completed by the time you get to the middle of March. And we do that so that you can spend the last six or seven weeks that you're here doing a one-on-one -on -one preceptorship with a nurse. So that means that we are freeing you from the lecture time so that you can work with that preceptor whenever he or she is working. You might have days, you might have nights, you might have weekends, you probably will have some 12 hour shifts, some eight hour shifts, but students have about, I think 170 or 80 clinical hours that they have to fit in in those last six or seven weeks. And that's that last clinical experience that um, gives you a taste of what to expect once you graduate and become a registered nurse. So that's the fourth year. Here we go. Woo! Oh, shoot. <laughs> oh, you're so strong and ready when you graduate. That's why I threw that one in there. So that's all the curriculum. That's all the classes. Super exciting. Goes by before you know it. But I put this one up there just so you know. There's a lot more to nursing school than just going to class. You will have fun. And like I said, because you're in all these classes together, you get to know people well. So there's a lot of social life that happens inside and outside the classroom that I hope you'll look forward to. There are also a million other ways that you can get involved in the life of the school and the life of the university. You can do a minor. A very, very, very few students sometimes choose to do a double major. We have a great distinguished majors program. I know a lot of incoming students are often interested in learning more about research and how to get involved in research. Of course, you're taking a research class with us, but we have a lot of students that get engaged one-on-one -on -one with our faculty and research, sometimes through our summer research internship. And then we often have anywhere between maybe eight and 14 or so of our fourth years elect to do what we call a distinguished majors project. And that's what you're seeing on the screen now is a student with her poster presentation that she made for her distinguished majors project, but then was invited to present at a nursing convention after she graduated. So there are many opportunities um, outside of the curriculum for students who have an interest in that sort of thing. We also are a nursing school that offers an opportunity to do an international exchange. So study abroad is sort of a generic term, term for having an experience outside of your, let's say, home campus where you are. Exchange means that a university or a program has a, an agreement with another program in a different part of the world, and you are exchanging students. So in the School of Nursing, we have two international exchanges. One of them is at um, the University of Queensland in Australia. These are the three students who were there this past fall. Both of our exchanges are set up to run in the fall of the fourth year. That's because we need to teach you a little bit about nursing and nursing skills before we can send you someplace else to learn how to do it there. So exchange means a few things. One thing it, thing it means is that while these students were taking courses in Australia, Queensland sent us students to take courses here. So there's a sort of a one-on-one -on -one person exchange. But then it also means that because it's a contract between these two schools, these three students who are in Australia were still paying all their tuition and fees to UVA and they got all their financial aid. It really, it, it will cost you a little more to do these because obviously you have to get there. And I hope while you're there, you might spend some money doing some fun things. But as far as financially, it looks exactly the same. And which is really important for nursing, you get a transcript that shows that you took your UVA courses, you just took them someplace else. So like I said, this is one of our exchanges in Queensland. And then we also have an exchange at Auckland University in New Zealand. I specifically chose this picture because I get lots of pictures from students on exchange 
who were scuba diving or bungee jumping or skiing. But I did ask one group once, would you please send me a picture that proves you're in nursing school? So they sent me this cute picture in their Auckland nursing uniforms outside the medical center there. So those are two of the ways that you can um, have that global experience. We also, as I mentioned, have this community health course that you take either in the spring of your third year or the fall of your fourth year. If you elect to do it in the spring, some of the students in that class are eligible to apply to have their clinical that semester take place over spring break. Typically when we've done this in the past, that spring break clinical for community health has taken place in Central America. So not so far to journey to for a week's amount of time. You still do some community health hours, I believe, in Charlottesville, but you do the bulk of those hours during spring break, during the spring of your third year. And then of course, you're gonna hear me say this a million times if you come to orientation and then come join us, but you don't have to do everything in nursing while you're here. I think it's great if you want, but you, you may recall, I mentioned a whole lot of clinicals that you do with us. Well, most boards of nursing require a Bachelor of Science in Nursing applicant to have a minimum of 500 clinical hours in their BSN program in order to be eligible to take the test to be an RN. In our program, you graduate with over 750 hours. So I'm just letting you know right now, we are gonna make sure you know everything you need to know about nursing. So I do want you to maybe think about doing some kind of global experience that might not even involve nursing. It doesn't have to be one of the ex exchanges. And there are a lot of nursing students and a lot of UVA students who choose to do their study abroad or global experience over the summer. We have some of our own programs in places like Valencia, Spain, but you are eligible to take just about any kind of study abroad experience you want in the summer. And I've known students who've gone to Florence, Italy to study art history. I know some who've gone to Costa Rica to take an environmental science class. I've known students who, instead of taking courses for credit, have taken advantage of the UVA Career Center's global internship program in the summer, where so many of them didn't necessarily go do an internship related to healthcare. But really, any kind of experience you have like that, whether it's a class, an internship, or whatever, getting to experience and live in another culture for a short time in your life is always going to make a difference in not only the person you are, but even maybe your nursing practice in ways you wouldn't expect it to when you think about it right now. So put global on your list. It's possible. There are a ton of extracurricular things at UVA. I don't know. I don't know how many. Uh, I think I hear that there's 700 clubs or something like that, but we have some built into the School of Nursing. If you've been attending some of our panels, you've probably heard every single one of those students say, get involved in the nursing school, but you definitely need to have a life away from us. You spend a lot of time with us. So having an opportunity to get out there and do some other things is important. Now, I'm just going to tell you a little bit about some of the things our students do and maybe highlight some of the nursing extracurriculars that are out there. We have nursing students who are orientation leaders. This is a group of, of students at orientation with me who were leaders. We have RAs. We are on the UVA Student Council. We have reps on the Honor Committee and the Judiciary Committee. Our students perform in acapella groups. They're in the University Symphony. We have Division I athletes, but we also have a whole lot who play club sports or I am rec sports. I'm pretty sure that one of our third years was the captain of the Quidditch team which, which uh, competes nationally. Last weekend, they were supposed to be in West Virginia for the National Quidditch Tournament before it got canceled. So there are a million things you can do outside of the school. Uh, you can get involved in Nursing Student Council. These are Nursing Student Council members at our annual Welcome Back Picnic. We have Nursing Student Councils, Diversity in Nursing for a Better Community. Each of the classes elects officers. Student Nurse Association of Virginia, Nursing Students Without Borders, the Man Club, Men Advancing Nursing. We have a group called Perennials for Patients. There are a lot of things you can do in the nursing school, but know that there's so much you can do outside of the nursing school. A lot of UVA students are really into community service. That's true for our students. Some of them volunteer through the groups that we already have. Others of them are very involved in Madison House. Some of the volunteer work they do, like NSWB in this photo, is in another part of the world. This is a completely student-run organization. They've existed over 20 years now. And this is a group that was there visiting the clinic 
behind them, which the students raised $100,000 for and built for the community of San Sebastian in El Salvador. There's just nothing you can't do and be a nursing student. Okay, jobs. If you didn't already know this, everyone gets jobs. You are going to get a job if you are going to be a nurse, for sure. Um, there's, but there's lots of support that we have out there for you guys to get those jobs. Oh, every time I click back, it does that. Mm -mm -mm. Like I mentioned, we include job search prep in the fourth year class, but our office offers all the career support you need, not only for getting a job as a fourth year, but if you're looking for internships between third and fourth year, some nursing students do that. And we continue to provide career advising for our graduates as well. So any of the career stuff you're worried about, we're set. We do an annual career fair. This is a sideways funny picture of the career fair crowd we had. Keep in mind, we're graduating 90 to 100 students. Many years, we have 20 to 25 hospitals coming to recruit them, which is pretty good for a small size nursing school. As of today, I believe there are only six or seven fourth years who have not already committed to their jobs. They know exactly where they're gonna be. In fact, 80% of them already had a job offer before we had to go online this spring. The hospitals want you, they come to you at UVA to recruit you, you will get a job. So we've gone through all four years. We've talked about all the ways you can get involved in the life of this place. I think we're ready for step three, where you are through those four years, you've been leaders of organizations, you've made a mark at this place, and you join the ranks of Mr. Jefferson's nurses. Now at UVA, we don't always talk about graduation, but we do talk about walking the lawn. We walk the lawn when we graduate, even if it's going to be a little bit later, like this year. <laughs> when you graduate and walk the lawn, you're going to be receiving a Bachelor of Science and Nursing degree. The summer after you graduate is when you take the NCLEX. And the NCLEX is the test that certifies you as a registered nurse. So your education piece is the BSN and your certification piece is the RN. Last year, our NCLEX pass rate was 96%. So you graduate, of course you pass it, you become a registered nurse and a Wahoo for life which is what we hope all of you would do. If, if I was in the room with you right now, I'd probably want to say, let's sing the good old song or something, but let's not do that on Zoom. That doesn't sound too good. So I'm gonna stop sharing my presentation and I'm gonna go back to the, I hope I'm gonna go back to the square. Oh, yay, I am. Oh my goodness, y'all, I don't see any questions out there. Y'all need to give me some questions. That's what I'm here for. What can I tell you about this place? What do you need to know? Looks like you covered it. Easy. <laughs> so comprehensive. That's right. Would you say a lot of first years have experience as a Certified nurse assistant. I would say no. I, get, I, do I would to say see a handful, if that. Yeah. Right. Um, the ones who do have the CNA license already, um, I'm gonna, actually, I'm going to turn it off because my internet's been so spotty today. It, it seems jumpy. The ones who do sometimes get jobs at the hospital, maybe their first year, although I think there's so many other things going on. I'm not sure that you need to do that. But no, I would say, what? Most of the first years don't have that. Is there a certain GPA required to continue with the program? Yes, there is. It's a 2.0. Mm -hmm. I can't tell you the last time I saw a nursing student with a GPA that low. <laughs> no, definitely not. not you. That's nothing that you have to worry about. Y'all are going to do fine. Plus, we, pr we do provide a lot of academic support. We have a lot of tutoring that's totally free for many of our classes. The classes are so small, but the faculty get to know you well. I 
I think it is hard maybe as a first year to get used to going to a faculty member when you have questions or visiting their office hours. But once you once or twice, you're going to find that um, it's really not that hard. Our nursing faculty, um, I think in some ways they just think of you as colleagues because you are doing what they're doing and what they love. So they, if, if intimidated by me, then let me know and, I'll, and you can practice with me or Austin or Tara <laughs> and we'll help you figure it out. But um, True. you're going to be fine. You're not going to need to worry about that GPA. Oh, uh, what is the thinking about the time about back to school in the fall? Y'all, until they tell me otherwise, I'm going to see you. We just yeah. don't know. We don't know. We can't predict it this far out. We really, really, we just don't know. So stay, stay in touch. All of us are just in the same game you are, kind of sitting around waiting. Yeah. Oh, good question. Do many nursing students go on to get other degrees after their four years CPA? Absolutely. I, I would be willing to tell you and guess that a good 80% of them, seriously, go get a master's degree and probably start it within two years after they graduate. I mm -hmm. also can tell you better, but I'm willing to bet some of you were already writing your application essay about wanting to be a nurse practitioner someday. Yep. yep. You <laughs> were. You know what you want to do. Um, so we have a lot of students that go on to graduate school. Um, a wonderful thing about nursing, y'all, is that um, most hospitals and health systems are going to provide you some financial support to go back. They want you to learn advanced practice skills. They want you to come back and take on new roles with them. So I know for some of you, it's quite a financial commitment, especially if you're out of state, to choose a place like you. But know that going forward, a lot of nurses don't have huge amounts of out-of-pocket expenses for graduates. And keep in mind, for, the, that, for that part of it, if your hospital doesn't pay or you don't get a lot of scholarship money at grad school, nurses make good money. That's true. I believe starting salary for new graduates now is $57,000, which is not bad for, for mo most young people. And even with loans that you might have to take out for college, um, that you can really manage that. And depending on where you work, you can make more because it just depends on the um, cost of living in various places. But, um, but many do go on and get that take that next step. Do many students volunteer with CARS or WARS during the first year? So for people that aren't from here, those are the, the two big uh, rescue squads in our area. So the C is for the Charlottesville and the WA is for Western Albemarle. Mm -hmm. You know, like we have more and more all the time who come in with an EMT. Some of them choose to join our local rescue squads because it's always a commitment. Right? Sometimes we have a few, if they're from Northern Virginia, who just go home the one week in a month or whatever it is that they have to provide their hours. We also have some who decide to do that after they arrive because one of the elective courses in the School of Nursing is a year-long EMT certification course, which you can take, you know, there's no extra cost. It's paid for as a part of your tuition. And if you take the entire course, you um, sit for EMT certification. So we do have quite a few. Are most of the hospitals in the recruitment fairs from Virginia? Oh, that's a good question too. Well, I would say yes, but I added, re added up recently and we have students going to 19 states outside of Virginia this year who are graduating. So when it comes to the recruitment fairs, the hospitals, um, I don't think they're at a point yet where they feel like they have to reach very far out to find the people that they want. So it is, I would say, more of a regional recruitment fair with mostly Virginia, North Carolina, DC, Maryland, for the most part. It doesn't mean we do get a few from other places every once in a while, but I don't think that should put you off at all because we, I've been here 20 years and we've always sent students all over the country to hospitals. And we have an amazing alum network. One of the one of the things I send all the fourth years as soon as they come back in August is what we call our alum job contact list. And those are all young alums, usually who have graduated in the past three years, who are willing to help you with your job search. And this year we had 287 names on the list at hospitals all over the country. 
So um, it, I, I, don't, I don't ever have a student who really wants to go to a different part of the US and can't find a job or a connection there either. Do you know how the School of Nursing is going to handle summer orientation this year? We don't know for sure yet. We're waiting to hear from the orientation office and from the Dean of Students office. Um, you guys may know before we do. <laughs> um, <laughs> right. I can't. So everything's just a little <laughs> bit day by day right now, you guys. We're kind of taking it all day by day and figuring it out as we go, but you know, we'll tell you as soon as we know. Absolutely. And keep in mind that summer orientation is really, 95% uh, of it is getting you enrolled in fall courses. So I think the parts that they, if they were to not be able to have you come here and do it, they'll find other ways to get that to you. And I'm, I bet you they'll beef up fall orientation some if we can yeah. be together this summer. But know that the nursing part of that, um, it won't be that much different or harder for us to pull it off. I would guess we'd do something over Zoom. But again, we haven't even talked about it because nobody's told us yet, so. Right. But we'll figure it out. Good questions, keep them coming. What did I forget to tell them, Tara and Austin? I don't know. I know you talked about the clinical hours, but did you, I know um, Tara and I had to come in late because we were in a meeting previous to this, but did you mention that our fourth years are um, not going to have any issue with their clinical hours because we're direct injury and they had enough even when we had to cancel clinicals this semester? Didn't mention that, but that's a good point. Yeah, yeah. I did say to y'all that we, um, most states require 500 hours mm -hmm. and about 750, 770, and that's why our fourth years, um, we're good to go. They, they even had way more than 500 because we, you get a lot. So you don't have to worry about that part right. of it. So even that, I know TC mentioned that one-on-one um, -on -one preceptorship, you get spring of fourth year, which is a huge part of your clinical time. And that was essentially canceled this semester for our fourth years and they can still sit for their in-class without it. So that's pretty amazing. If y'all haven't been able to tell some of you who have been in our panels, um, we hope we're able to express in this weird way how wonderful this place is. Um, I know lots of schools tell you that. <laughs> I hope they all tell you that actually. But um, I know you'll get a good nursing education wherever you end up. And one of my other little TCisms is that everybody lands where they're supposed to be. And I really believe that. But um, I do think that the community that we've been able to pull together in our little school of nursing is, is pretty special. And I think that if you choose a place like UVA, you're kind of getting the best of both those worlds out there in higher education because you're gonna to get to be in this little small school where everybody does know you, your faculty know you by name, you know all the people around you. But you also get all those benefits and advantages of being at one of the best public universities and a big school. I mean, there really is something for everyone out there. Um, football, basketball, all that kind of big school stuff, but then plenty of other ways to find own home and place. So we love it. We'd love to have all of you join us. I hope you'll all stop us and come be a part of the class of 2024. Is it time for my wig? <laughs> it looks better than my real hair right now. <laughs> I don't know about that. <laughs> but it is pretty amazing. Come to you, VA! Go Hoos! Go Hoos! <laughs> okay, that's my big ending. Thanks for joining us. I'm gonna stop recording. I'm gonna put my email